Hi, welcome to the Qualibrate webinar for bringing the world of DevOps to the SAP applications. My name is Alan Jimenez and I'm a direct director in Qualibrate. In today's webinar, together with our partners DXC Technology, we will showcase a practical example on how DevOps practices can be applied to your software delivery process. And we'll focus on how this can also be embedded into your SAP about driven development practices. Expect a full live demonstration on how Qualibrate and DXC Technology have been helping SAP customers to speed up the delivery of digital transformation agendas. Just a bit of housekeeping. We have all participants muted, but a QA and A session will open towards the end of the session so you can get some answers from our experts. If you have any questions throughout the session, please submit it by clicking the Q&A button below and post your question right there. For your information, this session is being recorded as we speak and the recording will be shared afterwards by our team. So we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the session. Before we start, and for those who don't know who uh, Qualibrate is, our company is a Dutch-based organization which is roots in QA and testing consulting services. Our primary focus since our inception is to help our customers to get the best value out of their IT investments, primarily focusing on managing the risk throughout their software development lifecycle. Our approach is not only to advise customers on how to organize their testing process, but also to adopt best practices and modern technologies to speed up the delivery of applications while managing risk at the same time. We have actually been very fortunate to have worked with top 500 listed customers around the globe and get, gained quite some uh, experience and recognitions on SAP implementations throughout our journey. A few years ago, we actually decided to move into the software business in an attempt to productize our field experience and knowledge from different industries and actually launch our Qualibrate cloud product and at helping organizations streamlining their process of software delivery to production. At Qualibrate, we actually believe that software quality goes beyond testing, and we have developed a three-in-one solution that transforms the way teams test, document, and produce training materials for end users. Our ultimate goal it is to empower individuals, teams, and organizations with the right automation technologies to keep up with the high speed of digital transformation. In the topic of automation, we recognize that modern delivery organizations are adopting standard practices for continuous integration and continuous delivery, which is the topic of today. I would therefore like to introduce our partners, Theo and Pedro, who will take the lead on the conversation on how DevOps can also be applied to SAP developments as well. So without further ado, Theo, please take over the stage. Yeah, thank you very much, Ellen, uh, for the introduction and welcome everybody to the, uh, the webinar today about the, the platform that we are going to show you that we've implemented with our customers together with, with Qualibrate. Uh, my name is Theo van Dijk. I'm a solution architect at DXC Technology. Uh, I'm based here in Auckland, New Zealand, and we've been working with the Qualibrate team and uh, the DXC teams across the globe, mainly in the USA, on building this platform. Uh, today, I'll be talking a lot about slides and some introduction on the, the, the project management tooling. But I'm working together with my colleague Pedro, uh, who is our real expert. So, Pedro, can you introduce yourself as well? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pedro Souza. Uh, I work here at the Exit Technology team in Auckland, New Zealand, as well, looking after uh, SAP and more focus on uh, ABAP development. And uh, my main goal here, or, or the, what I've been doing the last years, is really leverage the agile software engineering practice uh, throughout our team um, and trying to enhance the way we develop ABAP uh, for our customers. So I'll be looking after and I'll be running the demo for, for you later on, uh, trying to give you an idea on how is our development, how, what we call our development flow uh, in, the, in, a, in a agile software engineer way. That's it. Back to you too. So what we'll be showing today, as I mentioned, first a few slides introduction to DevOps and ABAP Git, then some benefits of CICD in the SAP world. We'll explain what we call the, the Clever Platform, which is the CICD platform, uh, and then we go into the demonstration. Um, I will keep the slides short, because I think the most interesting part is actually seeing it in action. Uh, and as Ella mentioned, if there's questions, Please add them to the question panel, and after the demonstration, we'll, we'll be on, uh, able to answer all your questions. Um, 
So DevOps and CICD are very common in agile teams. Um, and as many of you probably will know, in the digital world, DevOps is a very common uh, work method, just like other agile work methods. Um, focus points for, for DevOps and the, and the benefits are often all about collaboration. So it really brings the developers, the operations team, but SAP teams also uh, functional uh, consultants as well as BAs more together in a more fluid way where they can collaborate and share information, which uh, reduces the friction and uh, uh, knowledge leaking. Um, one of the main benefits obviously is shorter cycle times. Uh, so it allows you to deploy basically a number of times per day or per hour or whichever frequency you want. Um, and yeah, some of the misunderstandings of people is you don't have to. I mean, you can still keep like a, a monthly release cycle or a half year's release cycle, but it does allow you to uh, have shorter cycle times and release more frequently. And also that the, the fluid responsiveness, especially the feedback loop from your operation side of things, like the operational users of your system, the direct feedback into your delivery team and uh, making that part of your uh, sprint planning that makes that you can uh, rapidly responds to all the things that are happening in your uh, operation side of things. Um, so, DevOps was hard in, uh, in ABAP, in SAP environment, but Pedro will explain why it's not that hard anymore. <clears throat> yeah, so as you can see, what we have in this picture is what we call a classic ABAP development environment, uh, where we have uh, our development system with our two sandbox or with our two clients, usually a development uh, client, another one is a sandbox for unit testing. And then we have our QS and production uh, environments. Uh, our developments, as you know, goes through our transport. So tra you create your transport, uh, you put on your coding there, you, you, you create your classes, your functions, programs or whatever. Uh, the developer usually just do some tests, some unit testing manually on the development side. Come move along to QA, receive some 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 data information on how to properly test integrated in an integrated way from your functional consultant. You run your test, let your functional consultant know that that is ready. Your functional consultant go there, test, validate if it's okay or not. If it's not, the developer the developer goes back to the to development environment, create a fix, transport in the SQL goes again and again. Uh, as you know, it usually take like days, one day, two days, depending on how much or how complex the process is to actually fulfill our, our requirements. So this is how we are we are used today uh, to develop. We have our development system as our source code of the repository and in our build environment. So whenever you activate your your program, your class, your function, this is being built. And it's also your runtime environment for your development. What we got now, what we have available uh, quite a while is uh, a tool called uh, ABAP Kit. So ABAP Kit is the Git client for ABAP development. Uh, it's an open source tool. It's, uh, it's being developed and maintained by the development community uh, around the globe since 2014. Uh, and this tool really changed the game for, for us ABAP developers. So now what we can do, what we are able to do uh, is to connect our development environments to a Git repository. This could be GitHub, GitLab, or whatever. Uh, and together with this integration, together with this enablement, we got the benefit of everything that a Git server can bring to us. So in a Git server, we, have, uh, we can have real code version control we can enhance our uh, code review uh, process and techniques. Uh, and we can also then have uh, other cloud-based tools connected and looking to our code, such as Jenkins and also Qualibrate, which is uh, the goal of the demo that I'm gonna demonstrate later on for you. Uh, with ABAP Git, as I said, we got some enhancement on code versioning uh, control and backup. Uh, it's not a replacement to CTS, so our transport is still work the same. So ABAP Git will also will always be 
connected to your development environment is mirroring your development environment to a Git uh, server or a Git repository, but everything that comes after releasing tasks, releasing transport, it all remains the same. But what you're gonna see is just how your development can be enhanced uh, via these tools. Back to you, Theo. Yeah, thank you very much, Pedro. So before we go into the demo, I wanted to show you a number of benefits uh, that we have realized in the, in, the, in the projects that we've done using this platform, using ABAP Git and a CI CD setup for, for SAP environment. Um, and well, first one in the, in the plan phase. Um, so as you can see, um, we improved the setup time of projects and infrastructure by 1500%. 1500 uh, sounds a lot, but basically we, it used to take us around two weeks to set up your, your tooling, your, your, your project management structures, all those kind of things. Uh, but also to have your, your developers onboarded with developer keys and those kind of things. But yeah, using this tool, tool set, which is all cloud-based, it only takes us a day. It's actually closer to an hour, but Let's say it's a day. Another important thing is the uh, time we reduce on stakeholder communications because everybody has access to the same tool set. And a lot of this comes back to our project management tool, Rike, which we'll show in a moment as well. Um, and it's got different views. So um, whilst we are working in a sprint backlog uh, environment, some of our more traditional clients find it hard to understand to, yeah, to, to think in sprints and user stories. But Rike allows us to switch the view and they see the sprints in a kind of a wonderful way, which makes it easy for them to understand, which saves them a lot of time on explaining them how these things work. <clears throat> and, and also we can share all the, uh, the reports in real time so people just get a link and look at the, the information that they, uh, they want to see which really helps a lot of uh, communication. So we can focus on the development side of things. Uh, also 100% reuse of developers and code across Git clients. Uh, reuse of developers is really about like offshoring uh, developments. Um, so um, by having all the code in a Git client, we can just have uh, developers offshore logging into the Git client and working on code for the different clients, for instance. And the beauty is that they don't need the developer key anymore. They don't need an SAP access anymore because they're not developing an SAP anymore. Um, so that makes it very flexible and allows us to yeah, be way more efficient with the developers capacity that we have. Um, in the build phase of the, of the development, 20% uh, improved efficiency in quality review and development effort because we use those automated tools, like we use the advanced testing cockpit, we use Qualibate uh, for testing, uh, we've got a code inspector. So a lot of SAP standard tools or uh, partner tools like Qualibate that we use to, to, to make this more efficient. Uh, and one of the most impressive benefits was like the creation of test scripts. And we had an example for instance in New Zealand, where we created more than 500 test scripts and we did it in 30 days and that included setting up more than 90 end-to-end -end fully automated regression tests uh, which typically would cost at least 75 days so that's a huge reduction in time that we spent to create these scripts then when we go into the test phase um, i think one of the beauties of test automation that is offered by qualified is that we can test 100 percent of all the planned tests Typically in projects, you don't have enough time uh, at the end of the project, which is where the testing happens. So often you test risk-based. Just those processes, those transactions that you know, okay, these are the ones that really need to be fine, that really need to work. Uh, but yeah, having automated everything, we can just run everything uh, as we planned it. Um, and also we, we save 75% of the time of testing. So where we do normally functional scenario regression testing, which would take us well, like on average some eight weeks in a project, we reduced it to two weeks, where basically we run regression tests every night. Um, and the only, time, the only thing that we did in those two weeks was bug fixing and, and, and changing things and testing those things rather than spending all the time of testing because all of that is automated 
pre automation is, is in a harder DevOps. Uh, automate as many tasks as possible uh, by Jenkins, by Crawlerite, so that you can focus on the value added stuff uh, and deliver better code. 80% uh, time savings of process and technical and functional documentation. Um, when you record things in Crawlerite, you automatically record your process documentation, you record your functional documentation. And when you are working in GitHub or another Git environment, you are uh, actually doing your technical documentation. So at the end, it's more grabbing everything, bringing everything together and publish it rather than creating it and, and, and uh, handing it over. Um, and uh, another one, obviously, in the release phase is that we execute 100% of the regression test cycles every time. Uh, that's something that without automation isn't possible, but yeah, because we've automated these things with Colorbyte, it is possible. Um, also, Colorbyte offers the training module, so all the scenarios that we've built in the preparation phase are now end user trainings. So we don't have to prepare the end user trainings anymore. Uh, people can just log in themselves and go through the trainings, uh, which saves hugely on the time that we have to spend on training. Uh, the operation site uh, close to zero defects after deployment. Obviously, because we did so much testing and we've got so many quality checks built into our DevOps pro uh, process, that the chance that there are any defects left is very, very small. Um, and up so far in our project, we haven't had any debugs or any bugs. Uh, I think that's that's the real cool part. And obviously also the improved efficiency between BAU and development, um, because the handover between BAU and development is seamlessly. So if there would be any changes or if there would be any bugs, that's automatically fed into the, the, the project management tool, which ends up in a Kanban board where the developers can pick it up. Um, just a quick overview of what we call our clever DevOps platform. Um, without going into too much detail, we've got three layers. We're, we've got a work management layer, where we've got a project management tool, which supports agile, waterfall, hybrid, dashboard, and all those kind of things. And we use project documentation in MS Teams. Um, we've got wiki pages and those kind of things to, to interact with, uh, with the users. We've got the bottom layer, which is all about SAP. So we call it the software distribution. We've got ABAP kit for, ABAP kit for the, uh, uh, the code. We've got active control for the configuration, which works in a, in a similar kind of way. Uh, and, and the normal things like your, your workbench for your transports, and we use solution manager for charm. All those things are, are there that you would typically use. And then the middle layer, which is all about the CI CD automation, where we consume all the code in GitHub that you will see in the demo. Uh, we use Jenkins as an automation server and Qualibate for test. Uh, acceleration, test automation, and, uh, and training. Um, one of the key things from this platform as well, these are the tools that we prefer to use uh, because we think these are the best of breed tools for each of those different building blocks. Uh, but the platform is, uh, is flexible. So if you don't want to use GitHub, but you're using GitLab, for instance, you can just swap it. And because it's all service-based, we use APIs, the rest will remain intact. And the same for all the other building blocks. It's building blocks, and if you want to bring in your own tools, you can just swap that, and, and the whole framework will still uh, be the same. For the demo today, we'll focus on the development flow, um, which starts on the left-hand bottom with the plan phase, where we mostly use Rike for the demo. So we show how we have sprints, how we've got a product backlog, and how that feeds into a sprint plan with a Kanban board. Then uh, we start coding. Then I'll hand over to, to, to Pedro, who will show you a that kit, and he's using Eclipse. Um, then uh, after all the coding is done, uh, we'll do the build phase where we use Jenkins, and then uh, the Jenkins automatically kicks off Polybate for, for testing. One of the key things that, that Pedro will touch on as well uh, in, the, in the code phase is introduction of test-driven development, how he does that and also uh, the code review process using the code inspector. Uh, okay, you, you'll, share, you'll see it all in the demo. So let's go to the demo now. Um, first, 
before I hand over to our developer is Rike. So this is the project management tool Rike. And if I go down, for instance, you can see a structure where we've got uh, a preparation phase, we've got a design phase, we've got prototype sprints, we've got different sprints that we've been working on. And one of the things that you can see on the screen here is just for the demo purposes is a product backlog where you can see we've got user stories uh, with the nice user story format. We've got statuses and uh, you've got priorities. You can add, assign them to sprints. Um, and you've got a couple of other things. If we move to the right, you can see that we've got epics um, and we've got story points. So all those kind of things that you typically would have in, in agile projects or in DevOps environments, uh, it's all supported by, uh, by Rike. Um, if we do sprint planning, we look at the product backlog, we've prioritized all those user stories, and then we pull the user stories for the next sprint into the sprint, uh, which then will automatically show up in a Kanban board, uh, which is basically a sprint Kanban board. So what you now see is the Kanban board for the, for the demonstration. You can see we've got new items that are waiting for a developer to get started. We've got well, nothing in progress because that's what Pedro will do in a minute. Uh, and we've got tasks that are completed. You can have ones on hold and, and all those kind of things. This is flexible as well. So you can change the buckets of your Kanban board and you can just move the, the user stories across, which I won't do because I will leave it here. Uh, but if I open this one, for instance, uh, this is a user story that Pedro will be using. Um, I open the user story and one of the key things that you can see is that there is uh, space to collaborate. So you can have conversations here, you can add in screenshots, like the people from the team that are working on this user story will share the dollars, they will discuss things all in this user story. So everything is nicely captured together. And the other important thing that you can see is that the description of the user story and the acceptance criterion. Um, and this is a very important one to remember this, because this is basically what the product owner will set. The product owner uh, describes the user story, what it would be. And then the, the product owner sets the acceptance criteria, which is basically the requirement. So this is what it should do. But it's also the starting point of the process. And at the end of the process, when everything's done, everything's tested, then the product owner will accept this, which means that it's ready for deployment and then Jenkins will kick in and, uh, yeah, um, and start testing things and makes it ready for the release. So I want to close the user story and then I'll hand over to Pedro to show what he does from the development perspective. <clears throat> Thank you, Theo. Uh, yeah, so what is and what is our development flow? So what I will cover is since the point that I get my user started and I move it to in progress, I've implemented my code and I implement my unit tests uh, as a developer. Uh, and I will also commit them to the GitHub, per, per, perform some example, what should look like a code review process on GitHub, uh, approving this feature on GitHub. And then what we will see is, is Jenkins uh, taking part or, or being triggered by uh, by GitHub and calling and, and triggering as well, Calibrate to perform our integrated uh, integration tests, right? So uh, as a developer, I have my board. So I will I'm taking a look on the user stories that are new and are ready for, to go for me. Uh, and I will pick up this one. So I have a user story that says that for a direct, as a direct, as a salesperson, I want my orders to be approved by a director when the amount is above 200. So, uh, just to give a little bit of context, so the example will be a class, and this class will receive a certain amount, and based on this certain amount, it, it it retrieves who is the approver for that supposed sales order. Okay, in this case, uh, I want to add the director uh, row or the director layer of approval. So let's take a look on this class. Oh, first of all, let's add in a subtask here. So let's add here a task for backend dev01 new role director. Fine. 
So just create here a subtask. Let's move my user start to in progress and let's go for it. Uh, so uh, before we jump to the code, so this is ABAP Git. So this is the view that we have on our, uh, on our Git client, on our development environment. As you can see, we have a link here to our GitHub repository. And what we have here is actually the link between this remote repository on GitHub with my uh, local or could be not local, right? Uh, development package uh, on my development environment. Here, and this is just for you guys take a look. This is our GitHub repository where uh, our where our development packages hook at you. So let's go to our class. Let's implement our new logic. Let's see, 24. Class sales order approver. So this is my class. This is the source code of my class. Right, so I already have two layers of approval if it's uh, less or equal to 100 and analysis, if it is between 100 and 200, we have managers. So this is what my project has implemented so far, for instance. Um, you should think, okay, well, all, if, all I need to do is just, just add a new layer here, but we are working in our development flow or, or the idea of a development flow that we have. We work with unit tests, automated unit tests uh, using ABAP unit test framework. So before I implement my real logic, I need to take a look on my local test class. So the local test class, it's a class that I have locally uh, attached to my global class where I can write a test to a unit test to assert that my logic, that the logic that I'm delivering is working. So I already have two tests for the process that I'm aiming, that, that I already delivered, right? So I have already uh, a, a test if the approve, if the amount is 100, I should get the approver. Also, I should get the approver for an amount of 200. In my case, uh, I want to get if it's above 200, right? So let's first, Let's start as a developer who performs test-driven development. I always start writing my tests. So I already have it handle it here. So I add my new test script, should get an approval for an amount of 300, so above 200. And I'm telling that, calling my global class for 300, I expect it to have a director, right? So let's add it here for testing. Activate my class, fine. So my new test script uh, is is implemented. Let's execute it and see how it goes. Control Shift F10, and it fails. Right. So my new test is failing for sure because my logic is not there. Right. So this is the this is the idea on test driven development. You first write your test, watch it fail, then you go to your actually and real class where your logic is. You we implemented the logic we want to. So when the amount is above 200, I want it will be a director. Just activate it, control shift F10, and we are good to go. So all my tests are passed. Perfect. So as a developer, I fulfilled my unit test. Uh, my new logic is implemented on on the project on the and my new feature is implemented so i would be satisfied i would be good to go and commit my code so to do that we go to ABAP Git, we click on the name of the repo um, and we got a delta so here i see there is a comparison going on between the remote that we the remote version that we have on github the local one we have on our development environment so here it is we can see what i've just implemented uh, next, next step would be to uh, commit this code. But to commit this code, what I need to do first is to go to my uh, GitHub repository and create a new branch. So user story uh, 
to have if I'm not wrong. So what I'm doing now, what I'm doing here is I'm, I am create a new branch on my GitHub repository. So everything that I have on my master, which is my main branch, is copied to this new branch. So I have the two versions of my code present on my GitHub repository. So here you can see that. And my commit or the deliver uh, of my new uh, feature, my new launch will go against the branch for the user story. And in case I had more than one of, and this is how we're just using for this example, you could have a branch created for a sprint, you can create it per, per user story. It all depends on the way you're running your project, how much objects you have. So it's more about the team self-organizing and understand the best way to, to deal with it. For our test purpose and to our demonstration, we are just created for the branch in order to, to deliver this feature. So what I should do is to go here and switch my branch to the user story. And then I can perform the commit. But before I do that, what I'm gonna do and just create another, I will leave a, an issue here on my unit test. So I'm changing the result of my class for the amount above 200 to from director to CEO. Um, as you may imagine, what happens is that my unit test is failing. And I'll leave it like that just to demonstrate the capability that we have uh, on ABAP Git, uh, on, which is like when I do my stage or when I prepare my code to be committed, what happens is that I have attached to this repository a code inspector variant, right? So code inspector is a, an SAP standard tool. Uh, it's been there for a while. And what we can do on, on our code inspector is set uh, the most diverse uh, numbers and, and types of checks uh, of quality and syntax checks against your development package or your code. So on this specific code inspector check variant, well, what I have said it is that whenever my development has unit tests, like here, so the class that I'm trying to deliver has unit tests. All my unit tests are executed. And if some, if any of my unit tests fails, then an error message comes uh, to the screen and my second step of the stage is blocked, right? So wh and why this is so uh, important, why this feature is, is so, g give us a, a lot of power in terms of code quality control. So imagine that you have an offshore team or you have a huge development team and you have coding being created and being delivered all the time. So what we can do here, what we can, we, we can not enforce, but what we can assert in our development environment is whenever you have on your team code being uh, submitted or, or committed to, to GitHub, your GitHub repository, this code should be first covered by unit test and second, your unit tests should be um, should be passing, should be working 100%. Uh, if we compare to our, as we talk about with our classical ABAP development environment, of course that this is logic is very simple, but imagine that what would happen here if I don't have unit tests, I would simply add this new logic in here, I will would I would release my task and release Sometimes you, you straight deliver to, to your test environment because you don't have you, you don't have enough test data on your development client. So you move it to quality. Uh, after the whole transport, you notify your functional consultant that the code is there. They're gonna execute and they're gonna fail. Then you can even come back here, debug, find out your issue, fix it, and submit a new transport again. Um, again, this is a very simple and, and easy to verify functionality and, and logic. But if you think on more complex scenarios or even uh, when you need to calculate price or this kind of thing, sometimes it's very complex. So it's worth to have the trust development in place, first of all, because you verify and you fix your issues in an earlier stage of, the de your, of your development. And once you have these checks implemented also uh, on your commit or embedded to your, uh, to your GitHub, uh, repository and to your control of uh, quality, 
it's a kind of a gate to, to commit code to GitHub. You are always enforcing that your unit tests are passing when this is done. So I know now that I have an issue and I need to fix, of course, that here we know that the issue is. So we move back to the director and we're gonna commit our code to GitHub. Just activate here. So the code is fixed. We rerun it. No findings, so our tests now are passing. We move on to the stage. Here I can select the files that I am committing. So here, of course, we only have two, which is the global class and the test class. We, we could have a lot of classes. Imagine that you have functions, you could have tables, data dictionary objects, you just pick what you want to commit at this point. Here we're gonna go with everything. Uh, just add a quick uh, comment to to our uh, commit. So what I usually do is I tag this to the I tag this to the subtask that we created on right on our user stories. So when you see when you you, you will see later on on GitHub when you see the commit history of an object, you can track back to, to Rike and understand, okay, this was a commit uh, linked to that task. So just a new a new approver row director. And then we commit. Cool. Let's go to GitHub. Let's see what happens. So I know now that my user is starting to receive the commit. So my remembering my master branch remains with without this feature. So only my user story uh, 12 branch has this feature. What I can do in order to move the new feature to my master, I create a pull request where we're gonna merge these two these two branches. Or in other words, as a developer, I'm I, all the commits that I need to do, all the logics that I need to do to fulfill my user stories were done. Could be just, in our case, it's just this new row, but it could be another objects, could be new tables, could be whatever. New pull request. Here it's everything like from, from now on after the commit, everything that you see now is just GitHub usual process, right? So anyone who is, uh, who has experimented GitHub before in any other uh, development environment, it's pretty much the same thing. So you just create a pull request, you can assign your reviewers. So we have a pull request from user story 12 to master. Um, here is when our uh, new feature is ready to be merged. So in, just in case I am a quality manager, I am a development architect or well, whoever is my role as a reviewer, I can come here. I can see the commits that happen. So new approval role, find task back, uh, backend development one. I can see summarized here on the file chains, everything that was implemented by the developer. Uh, I can add comments in here. I can send back to the developer so he can add new commits or change accordingly to my review. In this case, I am satisfied with it, I, I'm good. So, but here is another game that we have on, ha uh, on, on dealing with our code versioning uh, on GitHub. So if you think on how we do, or we almost not do code review on ABAP, it's very painful. So whenever you need to compare versions of objects, you need to go object per object, uh, the, you don't have these comments, uh, feature enabled so it's quite kind of hard to, to keep on track on the chains or to do actual quality control if you go back to sap development environment so here also we have github available it's a lot it's a lot better so you can compare a lot of objects in once you can have a view of the whole picture or you can have a, a whole view of what's being delivered what's being added and where and how across all the other different objects. So if you had a change on a data element object, if you have a change in a function or any other object that is part of this pull, re of this, uh, pull request, so everything would be demonstrated here in a glance. But as I said, 
as I'm reviewer, I'm satisfied with my with the, the work that the developer did, so I'm ready to merge the pull request and actually accept this deliverable. Uh, but before I do this, uh, once I trigger this merge the pull request, so this is where the automated process takes part, and I would like to go with you on our Jenkins server and later on our uh, Qualibrate, just for you to understand what we have and what happens when we merge these guys. So on our GitHub repository, we have configured what we call the webhook. And this webhook will, is pointing to this, uh, to this server, which is our Jenkins uh, server. So here we have three examples of pipelines, uh, and, and these pipelines, all the all them, all this build process, they are triggering the same guy, the same script or the same test scenario on Qualibrate, which is this one. So here on Qualibrate, we have this change sales order demonstration, that where we have all our steps logged here, what we expect the automation, the automation to, to do. And what we will do is just log into SAP, open a, a dummy a sales order and change uh, the, a description and then assert the result of that. This is only for demonstration purpose, but we could have different scenarios in here configured inside of this uh, pipeline. So I will just show one of them quickly for you. So we have this one named created purchase order. In the end, it will trigger the display of sales order on Qualibrate, as I said, but just as an example, right? So here we have a connection, the connection with Qualibrate and just saying the scenario ID that I expect to run, which is, by the way, this scenario ID number 24. Um, but as I said, this could be different. So this could be actually a scenario to create a, a, a purchase order. So what we want to demonstrate here is once I merge uh, the code on, on GitHub, these guys will be triggered and they will, uh, each one of them triggering a, a process on, on Qualibrate. So if you imagine on our, uh, comparing this to our classic ABAP scenario, uh, what we are ensuring here is that whenever is the new logic that I implement on, on my on my on my environment on my development environment that I have already unit tested and the and the code review has already happened. Once this is merged to the master, we are triggering all the process that we want on our QA environment, for instance, or on our development unit environment, whatever is the place that qual the Qualibrate is configured to do. But I am testing, doing automated a regression test of everything or for everything that I want to be tested against this new feature, uh, ensuring that first, my, my, my new feature is actually working on the scenario that I was expecting it to work. And second, I'm not breaking anything else. So the, if you think when we de de deliver something to our functional consultants nowadays, uh, he needs to first execute the transaction that, that the new feature is embedded and would need to execute everything else which is usually something that not happens because there's a lot of time consuming. So we are here, we are kind of closing the circle on having the unit test, as you saw on my uh, local test class, being automated, executed on my commit. And now what we will have is an automation of the integration tests. So I know that in, in, a, in a time, let's say that here, once I push the button, it will be around two or three minutes for each one of the scenario. In, in, in less than a day, I will know that my feature was uh, unit tested, automated and set in, in, in a good way. And also that my integration tests are all working. So let's merge it. So merge the pull request, successfully merge it. What we see here, are our Jenkins uh, builds being triggered. And I will open the remote desktop connection here where my Qualibrate is running. And what we will see is Qualibrate taking stage. Let me open here. And executing the transaction that I intended to execute. 
and then it will go for the create purchase order, later on for the display sales order, and the, later on for the one that we name as post goods issue. They will all do the same thing, but they could be just doing different scenarios, as I said. And everything will be uh, track it down and log it on our Qualibrate execution log. And later on, we'll be retrieved back uh, to our Jenkins dashboard here. And then here I can, I know, like this can be scheduled to run like every day or, and then you will be also executed uh, on each uh, merge of pull requests. And here you can see, okay, when was my last success, my last failure, how much is taking to my script to execute. You have some statistic here, so, 60%, this is not so good. This is a little bit better, uh, 100%. And, and this is how we can keep the control on our dashboard and see how our solution is behaving every time we deliver a, a feature. Um, and here we end the flow. So thank you very much. Uh, Handle back to Theo. Thank you very much, Pedro. I think we, we we almost end the flow because your your build executor is still running, but it seems to be. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it running here so people can see that happening. But it will take around some minutes to complete because we need to open and finish the transactions, yeah. etc. But we can see it running, keep it running the screen, and yeah, well, but this one passed. It just passed. I would always assume that people have seen Qualibyte, but. Um, yeah, he, he's got a full audit log for all the tests as well, so you can see exactly the screens that were tested with the results that were tested as well, which is also great for your hand over to your operations team, because often operations teams, like basis teams, they want to see that things were tested and what the results of those tests were. Um, so that's what you can see all here in the um, in the log files of, of Colorbrite. The better base is now moving on to the post goods issue. But um, yeah, we might be waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this indeed uh, ends the demonstration. And yeah, I think I'll hand over to you, Alan. Sure. Theo, Pedro, thank you uh, for such a great demonstration. It was really nice to see such great level of detail on how about developments can also be part of a high speed delivery process, similarly to how other modern uh, companies do it uh, in the market. Uh, due to the time, I think we can jump into Q&A. I believe uh, that we have a few questions from our attendees, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we have a few questions here. Uh, this goes probably for uh, either Kio or uh, Pedro. Uh, this seems quite interesting for custom developments, but uh, what about customizing changes for SAP? Um, when you say customizing change, there are two, two customizing changes that we need to keep in mind. So there are those that we do uh, like standard master data to create a sales order type of this kind of thing. Uh, this remains the same. So ABAP Git, for instance, they do not uh, manage that. It will still be on your, on your customizing transport requests. What ABAP Git can support is when you create a custom BC sets. So if you create a custom IMG node or something like that, uh, ABAP Git can manage, can load to your GitHub repository, uh, and you will manage that just like your, your ABAP code. But uh, the customized, the heavy customized that we usually do, uh, which is the standard customized, they re it they remains the same. Yeah, and additional to that, Pedro, is uh, as I mentioned in that DevOps platform, we use uh, the Active Control, which is a product from, from one of our other partners, uh, which doesn't really use uh, the transport mechanism with SAP, but you can, uh, it, it set up a user story as well. And you assign your configuration to those user stories. And basically, what it does, if you want to move a sprint to a new environment, then the tool uh, compares the customizing from the production environment or the QA environment, just where you want to move it to, with the environment where you're from. Like if you move something from development into QA, it would compare the two environments for the specific configuration in the user story, and then the delta is what it will move across. 
And that would allow us also to do proper version control because you can roll back a user story or a sprint as well, because what it does, again, it just compares it to environments and yeah, moves back to the uh, So there's two sides of these things, apart from what, what Pedro mentioned. Uh, we use active control for uh, DevOps with configuration. All right. Thank you guys for answering that question. Um, uh, there's also another question about SAP BI objects, whether they are supported or not. Is that something uh, applicable? Uh, ABAP Git has a list I can show you online, uh, if you don't mind, quickly. Sure. Uh, it's on ABAP Git support. Objects, so I'm not sure if all all BI objects are are supported here. We would need to refer to the to official documentation of the project. So so here is the list. Uh, I just cannot be a hundred percent sure about that. Okay, but well, this is great. Actually, okay. great great information that we can share with the people. Yeah, of course. So everything yeah. that is everything that is manageable on GitHub can be can be on our flow. Just need to check here if it's if it's there. Okay. Uh, one thing to emphasize that as well: that the ABAP Git is really specifically for ABAP environments. So basically, every ABAP ABAP system can work with ABAP Git. Um, if you've got like Java, or you've got SAP UI five. That can have its own Git client as well. That can be consumed in, in, in GitHub Correct. or the other Git environment. Okay, great. Actually, out of curiosity from my side, guys, because this is quite interesting, uh, I have a question uh, that some of our customers sometimes ask: uh, Is there an impact on the on the size of your landscape? Because we have customers that have a four-tier landscape. Uh, how, how would this impact uh, such a, a setup? Mm. Yeah, my initial answer would be that do, does not change because ABAP Git will remain on your uh, only on your development environment. And what we are doing, you're just hooking your development environment to a Git repository. Okay. And most likely your CTS or your transport remains the same. So you still need to move across your tests. And uh, you might want to run a, a good batch of tests on your test environment as well. So. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, additionally, in a true DevOps setup with automation, you wouldn't have like your your, your sandbox environment or your test environment yeah. or your pre-production environment switched on all the time. You just well, you, you do your development cycle. Then when Jenkins moves your transport into your QA environment, Jenkins would first ramp up your QA environment uh, in the cloud. Okay. Copy your environment, start up your environment, move the transport run all yep. the automated tests and then everything should be green and Jenkins should shut down your environment again. And then same for the pre-production. So you have your release ready, Jenkins will build your pre-production environment, ramp it up, move the transport, test everything using Qualibyte and after everything's successful, uh, it shuts it down. Uh, and that's where the automation kicks in and that should, it, it doesn't reduce the, the like the, the, the size of your landscape, but obviously it would, significantly reduce the cost of your landscape. Absolutely. You're also pushing a lot of quality towards earlier cycles, uh, earlier environments, right? Which is quite a, you increase the quality of your development environment, which I think delivers a lot of value. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so due to uh, the time constraints, I think we can start uh, facing down into the, uh, into the webinar. So I would like to thank everyone uh, for the interest and for uh, the great questions. Of course, I want to extend my thanks to Tio and Pedro for showing such a great demonstration of the solution. And we certainly hope that they have provided the answers that you have expected. Uh, so in case we miss some of the, an of the questions, we will be more than happy to answer them uh, personally in a follow-up. Uh, but again, we want to thank uh, everyone uh, for taking the time. As, an, uh, as I mentioned in the start, we will share uh, the recorded session afterwards. Uh, so please feel free to share with your colleagues. If you have any specific question, please uh, feel free to reach out to me, uh, Tio uh, or Pedro. So again, thank you all. And uh, thank you, Tio, Pedro. It was fantastic. Uh, I thank wish you, you everyone a very nice day. Thank you very much.
very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.